seven thirty already. But then let's wait a while more. Uh, we have nine people here. I'm not wrong. We have thirty who RSVP. Uh, maybe let's wait. Wait for five more minutes. Mike, are you going to get your dinner like later or halfway through? I jaga, right? This thing. Oh, it's the only thing. Uh, for those who just join, let's we let's wait until seven thirty five. Yeah, see whether more people are coming. And after that, we just start. Yeah. Today's session should be quite short. Uh, yeah. Mm, okay, I think let's start bar. Seems like not much people coming in. Or, like no, not much new people coming in. Uh, yeah. Hello, good evening, everybody. See some familiar names, and I also see some new names. Uh, yeah. So good to see you. Uh, anyway, yeah. Let Let's start with today's meetup content. 
uh, yeah, so the schedule for the day, okay, you can hear me right, okay. The schedule for the day, uh, should be quite short today. Uh, I did a lot of padding of timing for each section. So most likely we will end way ahead of time. And since you only have one talk today, right? So I was thinking that maybe we can watch a video, a Ruby video together or something. Uh, so I, uh, I'm thinking this is not on the schedule, right? It's something I thought about today morning. And so I'll just put it at the end. Then if you have to go, then just go along. If not, then uh, we can watch some Ruby videos. Probably some conference talk, bar. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's it. So that's the schedule. We will start with all the admin stuff and the talk. Then job shout out, meet up advertisements, uh, and then some of the every stuff again. Yeah, that's it. And then some hangout and like just some section if anybody uh, wants to discuss. Let's stop at the end, closer to the end. Okay. Then, yeah. So start by. Sorry, what happened? Okay. Okay, Michael Michael went out to get dinner. Uh so this shout out like uh it's for kind of for him when you anyway, yeah, today's session is hosted by Engineers SG. Uh the Zoom account is there and then uh Michael did all the during creating of the event and like letting people in. Oh maybe I'm not letting people in. Okay, okay. That doesn't seem like it. Okay. Uh so yeah, so Thank you to them again for the support uh, to help make this online session happen. Okay. And then again, uh, we have a Ruby SG Telegram group if you still don't know. Uh, yeah, so scan the QR code or use the link. I know you cannot click the link here. Uh, you can find the link inside the meetup.com event description. Yeah, so... Join, join the Ruby SG Telegram group if you haven't. And then some of the web, webinar rules uh, uh, is to you, is to mute yourself by default during the talks. Now. So only unmute when you are going to ask something or speak something. This is to reduce noise. Because before, uh, when I was starting out doing trying to do this event online, then a lot of people said that it's impossible to it's impossible to hold, do a technical talk online and then they'll say that a lot of noise or a lot of discussion. So I haven't encountered it myself, but since people say that they are very, very experienced in doing this thing at work, then uh, I'm just going to put it out here that, uh, yeah, so some governance by yourself lah, or your own audio input. And then, of course, turning on webcam is highly encouraged. Uh, this is not a face-to-face -face meetup, so we really can, we can't can't really see you, and you might not cannot put a face to a name. So uh, it's highly encouraged. Uh, so we get to know each other. Maybe just see like, oh, this guy's seen before, like that, something like that. Okay, so that's all for the admin stuff. Uh, so today there's only one talk, which is by me. Uh, I, I figured I will always be the, the backup talk uh, speaker. Uh, yeah, so again, then again, then if you have something that you want to share, uh, please feel free, please let me know. Uh, let's all make this like, create more content for our meetups and hopefully we, we can all uh, have a community doing Ruby together. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about building your in own enumerator. Uh, it's, prob it's, it's probably a very basic enumerator, not not a, like a fully skilled one. So it's just uh, just intro. I, I, I just want to use this uh, topic to like go into the, go, go through the idea of enumerator and all. So uh, yeah, let me start. Let me find, like, let me open my slide. I think I have to reshare the, the screen. Okay.
Can you guys? Eh, no, no, this one. Okay, can you guys see my slides? Maybe somebody can, can. can put it. Okay, the enumerator slide, right? Okay. Yep. Okay, yeah. So, 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 so for today's talk, I, I am going to go through the idea of Ruby enumerator. Um, like the subtitle said that you probably don't need to build your own uh, because Ruby already has has its own uh, enumerator. So, but then it's just really just for the fun of it. And it's just some simple brain exercise. No? I, I found it to be pretty interesting. Okay, so let's start off by talking about what is an enumerator. I'm sure you have, you guys have seen something like that before. You can call each and then you can like look through a lot, of, look through the items in the entire array to do something to it or to print something or whatever it is. So then my then I have this I have a question here that is, is that have you ever wondered how how is this all possible? And then the next thing is that. Uh, oh, like I said, that the most common, commonly, the most com you can see in numerator, like it's, where it's most most commonly seen is by calling each on arrays. If you call, on the example on the right, if you call uh, each on the array, actually what it returns is a enumerator class object. So enumerator is both a concept and it's also a Ruby call class. They they created a class for this this thing. So you can find it in the Ruby doc. The op. they have a page for it. Means that it's it's like the official ship. Okay. So what is so powerful about enumerators is that you can train uh, multiple traversing and searching methods. So this example is uh, you probably don't need to do this. I'm just like right. I just wrote something out uh, just to show that you can chain it all together. So you can call for for in this example you have like an array of fruits. You can just call, you can select fruits that weigh above 0 0.1 and then throw away fruits that weigh lesser than 3. So you have fruits within the range, then you can map it and then you do an update to that way. Um, of course, I think that's yes, a better way of doing this. But this example just, just wants to show the ability to chain, chain uh, enumerators. Uh, yeah. So then how do we how can we make our class become like an array right that you can enumerate uh, through the class so in this example i have a fruit basket class so the idea is that if we have a fruit basket then there must be a lot of fruits inside the basket right and then and then if given a fruit fruit basket instance can we look through all the can we enumerate through all the fruits inside this fruit basket so the easiest way uh, that's like number one. The way number one is to use enumerable. And enumerable module is actually a, something provided by Ruby call too. That's why you also have a enumerable, enumerable uh, page in ruby.org. So by including enumerable, you can make fruit basket uh, enumerable. Okay. Yeah, you get the idea. So how, how does enumerable work? I think that most people who, probably a lot of people, more people are familiar with this enumerable module, that uh, what it does is if you include enumerable, you just need to implement the each method on your class. And then, and then what this each method should do, this is from, if you read inside the ruby.org, then you will see it says this now, that, that this each method just needs to heal uh, successive members of the collection. So you need to keep building the next one, next one. And then and then once this method is implemented, then the Totora of the Tora of traversal and searching methods, like everything will come at the same time. So such as map, select, reject, etc. Everything suddenly your fruit basket have all these methods. And then it all just works uh, for some reason. Some some Ruby magic. Uh, I think from from this, from the fact that you need to implement each for all this to work, I think it says a lot about how all these uh, maps, select, reject, all these, 
what is the underlying thing that supports it, uh, which is should be the each method. Uh. So the next way to do it, uh, which is a bit less, way less than magic, is to this is method 2.1 is to use the enumerable enumerator class itself. So the enumerator uh, because it's a class and in, and in Ruby everything is OOP, right? So there is definitely a new uh, a new method to to this class. And then you can call new. So this is how it works. You call new, you pass in a block, and then uh, and then you just need to do that Y arrow arrow and then put it in something like that. So it's like the U. So every time we call, uh, we want to use this enumerator. Every time you want to go to the next item, next item, next item, is determined by what is the next arrow arrow in. So the first one will be the new apple two, then the next one is the banana one, then the next one is orange tree. But one interesting thing about this math, this calling new enumerator dot new way is that actually in the documentation itself ruby ruby dot dot org itself it says that this form is discouraged mm, not sure why is it discouraged uh, but then yeah basically it's there it's the official sense is that it's discouraged and it says that to use object enum for or object to enum instead so uh, so Actually, enum for and to enum is just an alias. I forgot is which one is aliasing which one, but it basically is the is the same thing. Okay, so uh, this 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 idea dot new. I I just want to go through this method just to let you know that it is a class, uh, like all other Ruby or Ruby thing. So it's it's worthwhile to know how to use how to use it like that. And then, okay, then this is a 2.2. This is the more official way of using the enumerator class. Okay, so uh, so this, I'm not sure how many of you have seen this, uh, this, this, what is it? Uh, this pattern, okay? You have the, the method each, and then you return the, in return enum for, and then you pass in the, the symbol that represents that method if there is no block given. So enum for is an actually an a method on the object class. So the object is like the parent class of all classes, right? It's like the root root class. And then that's why when you have the enum for there, then even if you create a new class, like class uh, my custom class, uh, then you will definitely still have this method. This method basically is everywhere, it's in every class. So to create an enumerator, what what happens is that if you don't pass in a block, like for example the code below code basket dot new dot each, then you will return the enum for an each, and then what happens is that every time you call next on this enumerator, right, it will just you uh, you the things below it. So it's a bit of magic here, but we're not going to go into like how it works. But I think. Maybe something um, something simple that we can deduce from this pattern is that you will this enumerator you will given pass given that you're passing the each symbol to that enumerator, then you will keep calling each probably with you will call each probably with a block, then you can go down to the U part, right? If not, you will still return the enumerator. So I think this is some uh, this is probably something that we can infer, but uh, but not now it's not clear yet. Okay. Oh, so so I, I thought about this. Uh, enum for actually creates an enumerator, which will enumerate by calling the method, the given method, which is each on on this object itself. Then that's how it gets to the u fruit new apple two banana one orange tree. Uh, this, all those values that is supposed we are supposed to enumerate through. Okay. Then the question is. Why would you choose to use this approach over the enumerable, enumerable right? Because the enumerable is like very easy. You just include the, in the enumerable module and then you just implement a each and you have, and you have everything done for you. It's only a full basket color, like a full, full scale feature, like a array like that. But uh, one reason you might not want to do that is you might want to 
you might not want everything, you just want one method, like one each or just one one select. And then 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 that might be a reason why you might not why would you choose such a this method? So you implement each method by itself instead of just having all the all, everything populated out for you. Then another reason why is you might have some aha moment, some med, some some good great idea that you want some enumeration logic special one that you want to implement. Then you probably can name it a cool name line instead of each of the layout map or, or reject. Then you can do some some magic after you by yourself. So that is another reason that I can think of why you you want to uh, do do this second method. Okay. So then then this is the part where it's like the brain exercise. Given that we have seen the patterns of how to how this innumerable works, right? Uh, but we have not seen like how how does it work inside? So for the maybe for the more experienced Ruby folks, you when you look at it, then you might already idea. Oh, it must it can be done like that, can be done like that, can be done like that. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of way to do it. Uh, but it's a worthwhile exercise to think about it because we probably use enumerators like every day without knowing, right? Like writing each using select, using map, and all this stuff. So to create uh, uh, our own enumerator, so the approach that I'm going to take is I'm going to replicate the the current enumerator. So so the current one is the each written in num for each is not block given, right? Instead of doing that, then I want to uh, replicate it by doing the same thing. So I will return my custom in num and then we have which has a in num for method which takes in a method. Uh, specified method if not block given. So uh yeah so the, the approach I'm gonna take is I'm gonna replicate it uh, just so just to learn uh, just to have some brain exercise to find out uh, how this can be done. Okay. And then of course after you implement your own enum then the enumerator has many many methods right then it's up to you to uh, see how far you want to go or what interests you, how to create those most more interesting enumerator methods. Okay, so I have a short coding demo. Uh, I just realized that I only share the, the the window for the for the slides, so probably you all cannot see my my editor. So I'm gonna share my whole screen again. Sorry, this is my over slide. Okay, so I, I, I hope that y'all can see uh, my code editor here. Okay, so, so uh, in order to replicate the feature of, of, the, of the, the, enumerator, the default enumerator, right? Like, what's a better way than, there, there probably isn't a better way than writing tests first time. So, so I, I wrote all the tests already. So for example, in this one, each, uh, for the each method is the default in num4. And then I wrote, wrote some, uh, just three basic tests that when you call uh, the, when you call each, so the enum is subject dot each, then you return the enumerator class object. And then you can call next and next and next. And it returns the, basically the next, next thing like apple banana orange and then after the end you can call you call next again and you will raise a stop iteration error so this is a very basic uh, three, um, three three features of this enumerator what this enumerator can do so uh, I copied the test uh, I didn't want to overwrite it so I copied uh, the test and then basically what changed is just this one, this custom enumerator part. So, so which means that we just need to get this thing to pass. If then it means that uh, everything is working right. So, so, so it's not surprising that 
the custom each failing lah because I haven't wrote any code yet uh, for this thing. So uh, let's start by uh, by creating the the custom each method. And then it should be returning, uh, calling enum for right. Like I said, just I want to replicate uh, whatever whatever is already, whatever is done by the normal normal method. So I can call custom enumerator dot enum for and then custom each. So this one is also replicating uh, this one. The method here and the symbol here should match. If not, block even. So, and then we should have all the U also. Okay. So, this is obviously going to fail because the custom enumerator doesn't have the enum for method. Uh, and then what I'm going to put here is I'm going to put self here is because enum4 is the object class method object method right so of course it got it, it got uh, the method has access to itself the fruit basket instance but then for my custom enumerator because my method is outside of the object class is my own class right so i'm going to pass in the object instance so, yeah it's like a hack behind uh, over it so in my custom enumerator class then i definitely have to uh anyway zoom. i don't know why my computer is slightly lagging i think it's a zoom uh so custom eh no enum4 and then i have an object and then a method uh method in here okay so in order to pass the first one of course it has to return the custom enumerator class object so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do custom enumerator dot new and then i pass in the object and method and so it's like just uh, just proceeding through, okay. And then, how to get that to work? I must take in the object method here, right? Okay. So let's run the test. Yeah. So we got the first one working, which is uh, it returns that the custom enumerator class uh, object, but then it still it still doesn't enumerate over everything, lah. Okay. So, so then now by calling, uh, there's a method here called next, right? And then next actually enumerates every time you call next, it, it will go through the the fruits one by one, and of course then it also means that we probably need some state to to track where which 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 fruit have we enumerated till, right? So. So now, uh, wherever you connect by right, you should do the next one. So how do we, uh, how do we keep the state? Okay. So of course here, then there's many method, many many ways of doing it. Uh, and, and I'm sure all the more experienced Ruby engineers will have like a lot, a lot of ways, maybe even better than mine. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, use fiber. So I talked about fiber in the last last talk uh, so then then that's how i came to this topic of doing enumerator so uh, i'm just gonna continue like using fiber and then uh yeah that's just just so to link link the talks okay so uh so i'm gonna wrap it in a fiber and then i call object dot send and then the method and then this time around because i want to I want to uh, tra keep track of what, which fruits I am, right? So I just wrap this entire method into a fiber. And then every time I call, uh, every time I continue the fiber, you'll just yield the next one. Okay. So then I will do fiber.u and x. Okay. So, so I'm calling the object itself and then I'm calling a custom each and passing in a block. Means that you will not get blocked here. So you will come down to here and then and then because it's a block right then every time i run the u it will just give me the, the next apple orange uh, apple banana orange so then in order to make the next to work 
I just need to do fiber dot resume. Yeah. So I, so then every time you resume, we'll give you the next one. So I believe the next test will pass. Okay, then the next test is passing ready. So it means that the next calling next going through the uh, the fruits works now. So so then the last one will be to raise the stop iteration uh, error. Right now it still doesn't uh, because the test it says that nothing nothing was raised. It, it's just kind of stop law every time you call next. Uh, probably something happened in this test, but we cannot see. It just didn't raise the, the stop iteration. So what I'm gonna do here is if you cannot resume anymore, then we're gonna raise a uh, stop. Oh. Stop iteration. Stop new. And then let's see what's the message. Iteration has reached the end. Okay, something like that. Okay, so I think that this one should work. Yeah, okay, so now it works. So, um, yeah, so this is just one way of doing it. Uh, Initially, it was a bit confusing for me to get to this state. Uh, my code was like way longer. Then I, I keep looking at it, and then somehow I like reflected down to something this this simple using fiber. But um, but I'm sure that you it'll be interesting if you can write the test and then see where you can get you how you can do this enumerator thingy. Uh, see how you can build your own maybe some some better logic and all. Yeah, so that's it for my live thing. So, uh, so of course, then as you can see, that it's like a super super simple implementation of an enumerator. And then, oh, I didn't realize. Oh, okay. and then, um, uh, of course, it's lacking way 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 a lot of features. So this is a challenge, lah. Uh, I didn't. I I don't think that. Uh, I should be going to into all this, but then given that you have done the each method, like the you know, if you remember the enumerable class is that if you implement the each method, then on you can build, map, select, reject many things on top of the each method. So I think it'll be an interesting exercise for yourself uh, if you are interested. If you are bored doing algorithms, then maybe you can do this. Uh yeah. So so just two two things, immediate things that I can think of is of course to implement take map select reject. The other one is can you pass in a block to this custom enumerator and make it still work? So so this is interesting to me is the next step. If you are into this, then you can write a test for it and then try to make it happen while not failing the previous test. So let's see for my sharing for today. Uh, thank you for listening to me talk about enumerators and I hope that you have learned something new. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's all. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, if anybody got any questions, I, I, I'm okay to take it. Uh, yeah. If anybody have any questions, uh, I suppose not. If you have any, oh, you have a question. Okay. So if like if you pass it to us here, then or if you try to ask it, you can like reach out to me uh, directly on the Ruby SG Telegram group. Yeah, you can find find me there. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, and we are done with the first talk, which is my talk. Okay, and like I said before I start, we only have one talk today. So the next part is uh, if anybody got any jobs to share or to shout out or you want to hire or anything. Anybody? Yeah, I, I do. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so, okay, so I'm Sam from Silicon Jungles, right? Uh, so typically we are, we are, we are a local uh, dev house. Uh, we do have a number of uh, clients. One of the clients actually uh, uh, want us to help them to recruit a new team, right? So our team is working with them currently. 
They're a local startup. They are actually a, uh, building a new social networking uh, product. Uh, it's going to be on Rails 6, um, Postgres, MVC stack and all. And then you'll be working alongside with a very experienced team uh, practicing uh, agile, pair programming, TDD, the works. Right? The front end is built using React.js and uh, React Native. Um, some of the features will be uh, live chat right? and uh, UGC, user-generated content. Right, and uh, anonymous uh, features, uh, verified profiles, KYC among the works. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a very um, new way of, um, uh, how should I say, uh, a new spin on social networking. Yeah, and, and it's actually quite interesting, yeah. So, so if you're interested, you can visit uh, siliconjungles.io yeah, to, to, to check us out, yeah. Do they apply there also? I do have a link. Of yes, if you visit the website, it's actually a terminal. And then if you could figure out your terminal commands, uh, there's actually a CV upload function. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anybody else? Do any jobs? Or like, even if you're looking for a job, also can. Uh, I guess no. Okay. If it's no, then let's continue. Uh, and then, right, so now is the, the next meetup will be on the 16th of June next month. Um, yeah, so I already created the meetup, meetup event and uh, the GitHub issue to detail the, the event like content. So please check it out. Um, and then also mark your calendar uh, for, the, for this day. Uh, the idea is that it will be like I don't know whether you realize that it's a person. You probably haven't realized it. I also never say is that the Ruby meetup will be on the third Tuesday of every month. So let's see how far we can bring this uh meetup uh going. How 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 long we can continue because it also depends on the amount of content that we have. So definitely. If you like the meetup and then you wish that uh, this thing to go on for a long while, so then please contribute content uh, to help us make this entire thing better. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So again, check out, check out the meetup.com event and go and RSVP there. And then if you have any suggestions, comment inside the meetup issue for, for the next meetup. Okay. And then... Again, uh, I think that this is very important to talk about the over and over again. It's like how to find us, the Ruby SG community is to, uh, first is the GitHub. We have a Ruby SG GitHub organization uh, where we, yeah, you can find our stuff. And then as we actually have a Singapore Ruby Brigade Facebook group. If you have not, if you still, if you don't know, um, not so active there, but I will still post announcements, like, for example, meetup announcements there. And then meetup.com, definitely. Uh, I'm sure you all know this. That's why you're here. Uh, and then, then again, our Ruby SG Telegram group. So the main form of communication will be Ruby SG Telegram group. Uh, I know some of you all, the ODs, know about the Slack group. Uh, I've decided that the Slack group is not worth my effort to go and post there because I still need to create open site and all. And they're also not very active. Lah. So we're trying out the Telegram, see whether it's a better form of communication. Yep. And then, oh, it's stuck. And then, oh, there are no more slides. Oh, wait. And then, Oh, okay. Sorry. I forgot to put an ending slide. Yeah, uh, that's all for the content. So like I said, uh, we're going to watch some video together. If you are interested, if you are not uh, interested, then feel free to drop off. Uh, it's okay because this is not, not uh, I didn't plan. I, I think I didn't like really like officially announce it. I only like thought about it this morning. So I was thinking that since we have some, uh, so, so little content, right? Then if Mita is always about uh, 
just talking there a bit soon. So, so I'm thinking that recently there's a Rails Kong, uh, Rails Kong on like conference just that they recorded everything online. So I was thinking that maybe we can watch something together. So I asked in the chat, in the chat, Ruby SG chat, somebody recommended the variety show. I thought it would be an uh, interesting, uh, a more lighthearted thing since, uh, since we're going to end the meetup at 8.30. So uh, we will just watch this for maybe 15 minutes or 25 minutes or 20 minutes. Uh, and then again, I realized that I need to reshare again. It's going to share the computer sound. <laughs> so let me do it again. 